pioneering the healthcare revolution in India, leveraging technology to make it preventive, predictive, accessible and affordable. We are now honoured to be in conversation with Dr. Devi Shetty, Chairman and Executive Director, Narayan Health, who is reflecting on the different ways of making India's healthcare ecosystem future ready. Dr. Shetty, thank you so much for joining us. Now, you've been a visionary in your leadership style and also your approach to care in the entire health industry. I just wanted to ask you how the past 18 months, which have really been months where you've been in the trenches in a crisis, how have these 18 months reaffirmed your purpose as you've been dealing with these challenges? You see, the, if someone has to write the history of this world 100 years from now, it will be in uh, two chapters. One is BC and other one is AC. BC is before COVID and AC is after COVID. COVID has transformed this world completely. It has, uh, the, especially my industry of healthcare industry, which is totally disrupted. We never thought patient will be sitting at home, looking at the doctors on their mobile phone and taking decision on major, major decisions like life-saving heart surgeries or a cancer surgery or brain surgeries just listening to the doctor on their mobile phone, taking the decision. And that is not one-off. It is happening every day. And in such a rapid pace, adoption of technology has happened in healthcare. It would have taken more than 10 years. So on the whole, technology has disrupted everything after COVID. And this has disrupted the industry so that in the near future, our dream of India becoming the first country in the world to dissociate healthcare from Africans, we can see that happening in the near future. Maybe in five, five years, ten years, I, I am confident that India will achieve that predominantly because of the digitization of healthcare. I can tell you that more than 95% of the illness will be treated with the telemedicine, with the patient at home, or uh, sitting on their bed, or sitting in a car, sitting in their office, doctor sitting in his office, or in his house, or a farmhouse. The interaction will happen because unlike all the industries, Vikram, healthcare is only dependent on the data. When you hear somebody is unwell, 95% of the people who are unwell do not need operation. If they don't need operation, uh, I don't need to touch them. And if I don't need to touch them, I don't need to be there. I can be anywhere. I can uh, uh, talk to them, get the data and explain to them what the problem is and I can take the decision. So technically speaking, when you hear that somebody is unwell, 95% of the time you can treat them online. And in good old days, I used to treat them online with the ISRO provided satellite. 18 years ago, before anybody knew what cloud was, I was sitting in this office, treating patients, looking at it, uh, the laptop with the Indian Space Research Organization satellite. Today, we are doing it with a mobile phone. And that is a reality that is irreversible. Dr. Shetty, now you, you often said that data is the best assistant to a doctor. I'm just trying to understand how that actually works in practice. How can data and analytics make healthcare more predictive and preventive? Vikram, I can confidently tell you that the electronic medical records, what the doctors are using today, within the next five years' time, uh, it will, the, the EMR, smart EMR, will make smarter diagnosis than doctors. And within seven years, I can tell you that we doctors will be mandated to get the second opinion from the software before starting the treatment. That is going to happen. 
Now, I keep this time frame of five years, seven years. Uh, I know it is going to happen much earlier. I'm keeping this uh, five years, seven years span because I don't want my professional colleagues to shoot me down. We already have the smart software which can give amazing uh, interpretation of the data and relatively uh, accurate diagnosis. Now, it may not be available everywhere, but it is a matter of time before it will happen. And what the transformation is, healthcare will become safer for the patient. Today, healthcare is not safer for the patients. It will become safer, it will become affordable, and it will become accessible. We have 70 million diabetics in India, and there are only 1,000 diabetologists. How can 1,000 diabetologists treat 70 million people? You just convert all the diabetic consultation online, we will have a phenomenal uh, healthcare delivery. We have amazing transformation of uh, treatment of diabetes. So there are two, three different uh, views that I have heard, especially on the use of AI in healthcare. One is that AI will be able to diagnose better than human doctors will. The other is that AI can never diagnose, human doctors are much better. Third view says that you should have human doctors assisted by AI. So both of them working together in some sort of a hybrid system eventually gives you the best diagnosis. Would you agree with that? Exactly, Vikram. The, uh, the AI will not replace the radiologist, but a radiologist who will use the AI will replace the radiologist who doesn't use the AI. All these technological tools will only make us safer for the patient. I'll give you a simple example. In the near future, when you walk into a hospital in India, forget about US and Europe, I can tell you that you will enter a hospital where there will be reception without receptionist. Whatever receptionist is doing today in the hospital we would have been done previous day by receptionist at home and the doc patient wherever they are and the, all the data what receptionist collects when the patient is standing in queue for half an hour will be done at home. And when the patient, when you walk into an intensive care unit, there will not be intensivist. Intensivist will be at home. There will be few doctors who will be who are required to intubate the patient or resuscitate the patient, but the doctors who take the decision on what needs to be done will be at home. It is imperative because today, critical care unit in US or in India, the patient gets the best care only between 9 to 5, when all the senior doctors are there. 16 hours in a day, a critically ill patient in ICU in India, US, Europe, get suboptimal care with junior doctors, junior nurses taking care. Now, once you have online health care with intensivists at home, all we need to do is 16 hours when the patient is having suboptimal care, you split it into four hour slots and tell the intensivists that they should cover the patients from home. And I can tell you that a intensivist who's sitting at home at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning with a cup of tea in his hand, who has just woken out of the bed, came out of the bed, is a lot sharper, lot, che lot cheerful, lot accurate, lot safer for the patient than an intensivist who has been working for eight hours the whole night. So Dr. Shetty, you know, on the other side, there are many skeptics who will say that Reliance on data analysis and data consulting and artificial intelligence, look, this is all very good, but it could reduce the empathy and the personal connect that at the end of the day is really critical in healthcare. How would you respond to that? Every day I see about 20, 30 patients online and some of my patients are living in a, uh, in a slum in the northeastern region and I can see the background of their house, so-called house. It's a thatch roof house. One strong wind will blow the roof of the house. And they are talking to, sitting at home in a slum, 
talking to one of India's senior most doctor. And what you are talking about has happened. Everyone has access to smartphone. Some of them may not own it, but somebody in the family has a smartphone. And they can access doctors like us by just touch of a button. And this is the reality. And this is what technology will do, Vikram. Technology gives the rich people what they always had in a better format. But technology will give poor people what they can never dream of having. And this is the beauty of technology, what it will do to democratize healthcare. And this is one industry which is ripe for digital disruption. We should never replace it, Vikram. That is the most empathy, touch is the most powerful tool of healing. We should never replace. The question is, how many people have the privilege of getting that touch and the empathy directly from the doctor. I can tell you, empathy does run through online. I'll give an example. A, I'll just give you one example. A 75-year-old lady in Calcutta, I operated on her about 25 years ago. And I shifted from Calcutta, came to Bangalore. Every year, she used to come to see me in Bangalore. And for her coming to Bangalore, it's like a pilgrimage. She prepares for one year for this trip. And she has to get someone to be accompanying her. And it goes on like that. And during the COVID time, nobody was willing to accompany her. And obviously, it wasn't safe for her to travel. And someone told her that you can see Dr. Shetty online. And she booked the appointment. And she was sitting in her bedroom. The moment she saw me in her uh, mobile phone, she started crying. She just couldn't believe that all the trouble she took all these years uh, is now she's sitting there in her own comfort of her bedroom and seeing the doctor she wanted to see. She was waiting for one year to see. So this is the magical transformation. I agree, empathy, touch are very important. I am very, very strong proponent of uh, touch. Uh, before COVID, when a patient came to my office, I sit here, patient is in front of me, and when the patient is talking, my hand is always on their shoulder. Because touch can convey thousand things more than what the words can convey. I am a very powerful believer. The question is, what percentage of our population have the luxury? So uh, I am not against all these uh, the, the, the technological tools uh, and the power of touch. But important thing is, as doctors, how do we take the decision on uh, treating the patient? Like I do examine the patient when the patient is sitting in, the, in front of me. I put the stethoscope, listen to their heart, listen to the lungs. But Vikram... I have the details about each and every cell of their heart. I have all the images, I have a CTs, I have MRIs. I can tell you what exactly going on with each and every cell of the heart. What am I hearing in a stethoscope? That is nothing. But patients want it. I agree. I do listen. But in reality today, touch is not that important. I'll give an example in our ICUs. We have a policy that a doctor cannot touch the patient. Only the doctors who are going to do a procedure on the patient in the ICU should touch the patient. Otherwise, you shouldn't touch the patient because if you touch the patient, there is a possibility that you may transmit some infection to the patient. So, essentially, how do the doctors take the decision on treating the patient? Because every organ is linked to monitors. There are images coming round the clock, real time. So these are, the, these are different times, Vikram. Future is never an extension of the past. It is different. All right. I just say, uh, you've often, uh, I, I know Dr. Shetty has spoken about how lessons should be taken from one industry and applied to other, indus uh, other industries and other areas. You've taken lessons from industries such as efficiency and applied them to healthcare. Could you, could you share some of these examples, some of the lessons that you have taken 
from other industries and applied them to healthcare. The greatest lesson we took is from uh, the manufacturing industry, uh, which always believes in volume. And in we, about 14% of the heart surgery done in India is done by our group. The hospital where I work, we do about 30 to 37 heart surgeries every day. And what we noticed is, when you do large number of procedures, your results get better. Your cost goes down by economy of scale. And everyone is oriented for some particular aspect of uh, uh, treatment. Like we are assisted by uh, our, uh, the, the, the trained people called critical care assistant. They are not nurses who are uh, girls who are trained to assist only for heart operation, complex heart operations. So essentially, they keep on doing the same thing over and over and they become extremely, extremely good at it. So we have actually copied many, many uh, uh, standard practices of uh, economy of scale, large scale production, uh, the, the, the many of those things. So essentially, this industry is not dramatically different than other industry, but it is a complex industry because in every other industry, the relationship between the customer and the provider of service is all about convenience, comfort and everything else. Whereas in our relationship between the patient and the doctor, the discussion is about the death. So it is a very sensitive issue. So the safety, security is the most important thing in our relationship. Dr. Shetty, one last question to you, which is, you know, on the other side, you're known as a purpose-driven leader. You've known for the leadership skills that you bring. Any lessons that you would like to tell everyone else who's listening to this, people from other industries, any lessons that they can take from you or from the healthcare industry in general? The only lesson I learned uh, from my uh, professional life is that if a solution is not affordable, it is not a solution. In any industry, you may create a fantastic product, but if your customers cannot afford it, it is of no use. So in my industry, I keep getting excited when somebody has developed an artificial heart. We have been implanting artificial heart for the last 12 years. It is a phenomenal achievement. But an artificial heart in Indian context costs more than a few million dollars. How many people in my country can afford it? So that is, not, that is of no use. So essentially, in every industry, if the strategy is that if their product, whatever they create, is going to make a meaningful difference to the common man, I can tell you they have succeeded. Dr. Shetty, it's been really great. It's been really great listening to you. Thanks. Th thanks. Thank you so much. One of the things I've increasingly realized in the past two years is that nothing can replace empathy. Let's keep that at the core as we drive ahead with a digital first mindset.